subject number two will never be number one. Dear Stephen mm. Shirley, I was a single and attractive 34-year-old woman losing hope at finding love. I grew tired of the dating cycle and I decided that I would not have sex again until I was married. I prayed and practiced celibacy and a year later, I met the man of my dreams. He is handsome, educated, gainfully employed, and he loves the Lord. I fell hard for this man, and a year after we met, we got married. I was so excited for my wedding night because it would be our first time making love. He is blessed with the proper equipment, but it's his skill set that's lacking. On our wedding night, I had the absolute worst sexual experience I've ever had. It was four minutes from start to finish. Then he passed out and slept like he is showed out. Since then, he's been overly confident and he's not as attentive and loving as when we met. Six months into the marriage, I ran into an old friend from college and he had some dental work done and it made a world of difference in his appearance. We had lunch and we talked for hours. He said that when I got married, it broke his heart because he's always had a big crush on me, but didn't think I'd give him the time of day. Well, I've given him a lot more than that. I'm falling for this man because he has given me his whole heart and he holds me after sex, kisses my nose and looks into my soul when he talks to me. I'm ready to get a divorce and date my boyfriend for a while. I want to be happy. And so far, this guy could be my soulmate. Steve says that number two will never be number one. So I want your opinion on my situation. Uh, what if this what if this time there is an exception to the rule? Could this be true love? Wow. Wow. Um. Well, by exception to the rule, you mean he's your number two, right? And you're thinking of making him number one, replacing your husband with him. Uh, could this be true love, you ask? Well, I don't know about that. I, I don't know if love has anything to do with this. I do think lust is all over this situation, though. I, I do. And instead of, um, and what'd you say, Steve? I that was Tom. Oh, 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 oh! Sorry, I thought it was Steve. <laughs> yeah, I don't, lust... I don't say stupid stuff out of nowhere. Okay, okay, and you're right about that. And I yeah. should have known better because I do know you. Hello, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, you you talked in the beginning of your letter how you grew tired. You decided you wouldn't have sex again. You started losing hope and finding love, and then you met this great man, the man of your dreams. And six months into your marriage, you've already cheated on him. Uh, instead of trying to fix your new marriage and fight for it, you haven't done that at all. I mean, I think you've checked out. You've moved on uh, just six months in. Uh, I think you're falling for the grass is always greener trap. And not once did you say you tried to, you know, talk to your husband about what you like. You know, maybe he could do something better. And then wait a minute. You did say you prayed. Uh, you practice celibacy and uh, your husband loves the Lord. So I would think that you would honor your marriage vows since you're the one that brought the Lord into it. Uh, I, I don't know. This letter doesn't make a lot of sense to me. I want to tell you to leave your number two alone and try to work on your number one right now since it's only been six months into it. But I don't think you're going to listen at this point. I, I just don't think so. Um, hmm. 